What is up everybody, Dr. Bacon of the Dragon Peas here, back with some more Game Dev Tycoon. I <laughs> completely jerked out there. So, last episode we finished our third game, I think. Yeah, it's our third game, it's Return to Sender. And we were about to start doing some research on a custom game engine, so we're going to do that right now. That is going to let us do all kinds of new and cool things. Uh, with our games, and it's just gonna up the potential a lot. And we sit, get to sit here and watch as this happens. So I'm actually recording this right after the last episode, so I don't, uh, return to senders out the market. 19,000 units and 137,000 in sales. We have, like, almost the exact same performance of every game. Let's see. Uh, 19k and, uh, 137k, 18k, 127k, 18k, 120, yeah. Yeah, almost, no, these two are legitimately identical. Okay then. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and we, we could create a custom engine right now. There's not a whole lot to do yet though. So these, these, are, what, these are the things that we could add. So if we create a custom engine, we have save game, linear story, and 2D graphics v2. Um, we're going to go ahead and leave that for now. The reason being is that creating get engines costs quite a bit of money. And if we wait, we can actually research some more stuff that we can add to the engine. And then it'll be more, you know, more effective. So we're going to wait on that. Um, but now we can create a custom engine when we want to. So let's get to go ahead and develop a new game. So we've got, um, we still don't have much. Actually, you know what? We're gonna do some contract work. Let's see here. Yeah, we should be able to do that. We're gonna do some contract work and then we're gonna go do research a new topic and see what we can come up with there. There we go. Some 20k and then now we can research a new topic um disasters we'll try law law could be interesting a lot of these are like simulation subjects where there isn't really anything to do with simulation with them and that's that's what's bugging me i want to make something of a different genre okay let's try law and Strategy, maybe? It's kind of pushing it, but we'll try it. We'll try it. We'll see what happens. Um, law and strategy. See, I'm, I'm all out of Phoenix Wright jokes, is, is the problem. Um, the gavel falls. Sure. I'm just going to just keep picking really, really cheesy games. Oh, so... Now we have a new platform option. We have the NES, the TES, but it's the NES. So it's um, actually doing very well, market share wise. Now, the cost is a concern. So we have the dev cost, it's 10K more than for the Gavador. There's also a license cost. Now it's only a one-time purchase. So once we buy the license, we can make whatever we want, but it will cost $110,000 just to start developing a game for this. But I think it's worth it, so we're gonna give it a try. Yeah, eighty thousand dollars to acquire a license. All right, so that was that, and then, yeah. So this is gonna be expensive. Now I could do text-based for this. I think I'm still gonna stick with two D graphics. I, th I think, yeah. All right, so. Story and quest is gonna be a lot higher here. Gameplay and engine is gonna be a bit lower. I think gameplay will still be pretty high, but engine's gotta be the lowest here, I think. We'll see how that goes over. All right, um, AI's gotta be pretty high. Dialogue has gotta be pretty high. I think level design is probably the least important here. Well, strategy games always going to need high AI, and then law is why I'm thinking high dialogues. But level design is tricky. It's either going to not matter at all, or it's going to matter a ton. 
All right, we'll leave it at that for now. We'll see what happens. I'm not broke yet, so I can afford a little bit. I've got a little bit of wiggle room. I'm not going to die if I don't... Uh, make the world design a little higher. I'm not going to die if I don't... Honestly, I think these are all pretty equal for a game like this. I really don't know that any of these matter that much. All right, we'll go with it. I'm not going to go bankrupt if this fails, is just what I was trying to say. Again, with a totally unremarkable number of points. I'm really not stoked about that. I'm going to give it some time. Oh yay, more bugs. Alright, fine. Alright, well now everything levels up. <laughs> Literally everything but graphics has leveled up. So, that's good. Alright, we'll just release it. Okay, so here we go. So we can research new things. So we can do game tutorials and mono sound. So if we go to research now, these are the kinds of things I was talking about that we can build into a game engine. Um, that way we can incorporate them into later games. So that's why I wanted to wait on making the game engine. We're going to do mono sound. Now, it does cost money to research stuff like that, so we got to be careful. All right, holding our breath here. Oh no. Oh, oh no. That's not good at all. Oh dear, all right. Okay. 4.75 or something like that, that's bearable. As long as we, as long as we recoup what we lost, which we're not going to when you factor in the license cost. Recent released, bleh. The recently released TES home console by Nintendo has proved to be a massive success. Sales numbers have exceeded expectations by far. One customer says, I love the games that come with the TES and playing with a controller is so much more fun than on a keyboard. That's fair. I disagree, but that's fair. All right, we have mono sound now. We're not losing fans, which is good. That is that is a thing that will happen when you uh, when you release a bad game. You can start losing fans, which is a problem. Okay. Oh, I don't know if I can pull that one off. We'll try. Ooh, three weeks. Uh, we'll try the debug. I mainly just want research points right now, but I'd like to not lose money. If I scratch my head at all, I'm toast. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll, oh, right. Generate a game report. Let's see what we did wrong. Probably everything. So I will warn you, the game just kind of stays like this. Like, it's it, it's a pretty stagnant game. Launch strategy is a good combination. Engine seems to be quite important. Oh, yeah, test and strategy is not a good combination. That makes sense. I just, I wanted to, I wanted to buy something, I wanted to make something for the test, but I should not have done a strategy game for it. What I should really do is do a music game for it, actually. That'd probably be a good idea. Um, the game, the game is kind of, it kind of recycles for a while until you get a hit. Once you get a big hit game, that's what really changes things, and suddenly you start, you know, getting new new opportunities and options but until we actually make something really successful we are going to be kind of stagnant here maybe i should do a sports game for the tests we'll try it um yeah because i know strategy obviously works well in the Gavador, but i see it's tricky because i i to this day don't really know whether or not platform matching is more important for genre or for topic because obviously, you know, sports, music, these are the kind of things that work well on, you know, Nintendo um, and on controllers. But we're going to give it a shot. Now, one of the tempting things is is to, like, you know, release things as sequels when you do the same style of game. Um, but sequels is actually a thing that you get the ability to do later. So I could call this Bacon Sports 2 if I wanted to. Um, but I can actually, like properly make a actual you know sequel that the industry will recognize as a sequel later on so we're gonna wait on that um 
we will do uh, something water sports. Yeah, let's just, we'll just call it water sports. Maybe just like bacon water sports or something. Sure, why not? To do graphics. I guess a text-based sports game would be very stupid. All right, so we know engine is important for. Is that for simulation or for sports? I'm not really sure. No engine is important. Story and quests, not very. Um, gameplay has also got to be pretty important, so I think we'll leave those balanced. Maybe a little more on the engine. Alright, let's see what we can do now. Yeah, we're pretty much Gavel Falls and off the market. We're pretty much staying in that, you know, like one, you know, 100k range so far. Dialogue is definitely not important. AI and level design, pretty important. We're pretty much sticking right around there. We're about to go into year three and nothing's really changed. All right, world design, very unimportant. Graphics and sound. Okay. Recent studies suggest the increasing variety of gaming devices also creates a market for more specialized games. Some platforms become popular with younger gamers, while others cater for the more mature age groups. As more and more developers enter the market, we expect developers to focus their games on specific age groups to really make an impact. New research available target audience. So that's something that get, becomes really important, is targeting your game to specific audiences. Um, y yep, I know. <laughs> I will create a custom engine, like, right after this, basically. Um... Okay, here we go, finally. I think leveling up everything was important. I think this will help. We finally got some more points. Following the massive success of the test console, there are now rumors circulating that they, Vena, you know, take that as you will, another Japanese company is planning to release a home gaming console on their own. There we go, okay. This is good, this is, this is much better. New combo. Didn't we do sports simulation before? Did we not? Did we not? Does new combo also factor in the platform? I have no idea. All right, let's just release it and hope for the best. In the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and research game tutorials. Target audience, I don't think you need uh, to incorporate with the engine. I think that's just part of it. First reviews for Bacon Water Sports came in. Oh, here we go. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> it's better. It's definitely better. We got a nine. Come on. 110. 110, please. Please, 110. No. 7988. Definitely a lot better. Definitely a lot better. We're not stagnating anymore. That wasn't amazing, but... We got 15k sales in the first week. So that's a good start. Let's make a game of... Game report, see what we did wrong. We've we broke 250k, which I think we, we had before. Um, but we're getting out there. We're making progress. We're making progress. It was just <laughs> those first like three games were just the same. Here we go. Today, Vanna has com confirmed recent rumors about a new gaming console and announced the Master V. The, comp the company claims that the Master V is technically superior to the massively successful test by Ninvento and plans to release it in the coming months. Our post-release analysis of Bacon Water Sports is complete and we got the results. Engine is quite important. We already knew that. Thank you. All right, let's research target audience and then we will make a game engine. And that will be kind of, that'll kickstart. <laughs> that'll kickstart a lot of things. We're getting some bands, we're getting some cash. All right, now custom. Cu this is actually really cool. So create a custom engine. We can do we can do a lot of things. So we can do two D graphics version two, uh, linear story, save game, game tutorials, and mono sound. So these are all just good things. So there's there's some strategy here about deciding because later on there'll be a lot of options here. And deciding like to specialize engines for sp specific releases and stuff I always just go with everything because yeah it's expensive to make but the end result is a much more robust engine and you're not making a new engine every three games so what are we gonna call this um, so I'm actually gonna draw upon 
an old an old uh, old uh, name I used to use for stuff. In fact, this is actually the name of my computer build. I my favorite animal in the world is the Arctic fox, and I just think that's just a super cool name for like anything. So we're gonna call this the Arctic fox engine one. We will use. Hold on, how far can I get with Roman numerals? Okay, we will use. We will use Arabic numerals, <laughs> just in case. I, I, I'll probably get more creative with these as I go, but for now. So now we basically just make more tech points as we figure out how to do that. That is off the market. 45k and 320k in sales. That is much better. This is much better than what we were doing. So we just bubble up technology points until we're done. Gives us some free research points. Not a big deal. It obviously takes some time, so you can you can lose some money if you're not careful doing this. But you get to you get a lot more options afterwards, and your games can be a lot better. Today, the Master V has been released. All right, and that will be decent for a while. It it won't last very long though. Arctic Fox Engine One is now complete. All right, and we're back to where we were before, basically. Um, I don't think we need to do any contract work. Do we have? Okay, so here, so now we have the option of of a uh, target audience. So what I'm thinking about doing is doing another alien action game. Or actually, no. What I want to do is I want to do I want to find some contract work. I want to get some more research points. Oh goodness, no. Um. I want to get some more research points, and I want to make a sci-fi action game for mature audiences. And I think we're going to do the Gavador. We might try the Master V, but the Master V, I don't think. Yeah. Start up the market worldwide. In industry experts say that the console is not very well marketed in North America, but that it will flourish in other parts of the world. Yeah, so I think we'll, we'll try the Gavador for now. I just don't want to buy a Master V license. I don't want to risk it. Alright, so let's do... Um, oh no, we were going to research, right. We are going to research... New topic. Vocabulary. <laughs> so this is what I'm talking about. Like, okay, I guess if you target it for young... Sure. Is sci-fi not an option? Oh! I was thinking of uh, another, another game I was playing where sci-fi was something we discovered. Crap. Okay. Vampire, maybe? Sure. We'll do vampire. Just because we can make a, you know, uh, I don't know, Curse of Strahd video game or something. Something weird like that. Alright. Develop new game. So we're going to do mature. Now, the market for mature games at this point is not great, uh, like at all. So this may flop hilariously, but we're gonna try it just because I want to mess with this. Because I, I don't tend to be super adventurous with just this game in general. I tend to rely too much on, on the history. Um, but we're gonna be adventurous this time. We're gonna do vampire action. And we're gonna do, yeah, we're gonna do the Gavador. Yeah, because I know the, yeah. Do the Gavador. We're gonna use the Arctic Fox Engine 1. We're gonna call it um, uh, let's see here. The Nightman. Sure. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just being edgy. Alright, 2D Graphics V2 does make it more expensive, so if this fails, we might be in trouble. But let's hope for the best. <laughs> no design points, no technology points, just two bugs, just, just because. All right, so here's what I was talking about with more options. So now we have choices here. If we integrate them, our game becomes better, but it costs more. Um, so we're gonna want a bit more story and quests. The engine is gonna be pretty important here, and we're gonna go ahead and do it all. We're gonna we're gonna take a risk. We're gonna do it all, and we're gonna hope for the best. So save game, game tutorials, and linear story. We're gonna be a bit more technology this time than usual. All right, we know level design is important. AI is also important, but I think we're gonna put level design first this time, just see what happens. 
dialogue is a little better. All right. We're doing well so far. So far, we're doing well. All right, world design a little better. And then I think this is fine. We're gonna do mono sound instead of basic sound. It's a little more expensive, but it's better. All right. Hi, I'm Steve O'Connell, a reporter for Planet GG. We've heard a rumor that your company is developing a game for mature audiences. Would you be willing to give an interview about this? Sure, why not? Great, thank you for your time. We'll publish the interview next week. All right, that was interesting. Okay, so we're doing a lot better. Planet GG has recently published an interview with Bacon Industries. According to the interview, the company is working on its first game targeted at mature players. Henry, owner and CEO of Bacon Industries, said, We think that players are looking for more mature content in games, and we are willing to take a risk to give it to them. I mean, mature content is kind of a strong word here, but all right. Many industry experts say that sooner or later, games with mature themes will become more common. We are curious to see how the market will react to these games. And now we have hype. Now hype is dangerous. It can make your game sell really well, and it can also make you lose a crap ton of fans if your game ends up being garbage. New research available casual games. That's gonna be good. So hype is hype is a, a double-edged sword, but we're gonna hope for the best. This is definitely the best one we made so far as far as like points and everything goes. So we're making progress. We'll just see how it's actually received. It's vampire action. I mean, I, I don't know what else what else you you put vampires with. Oh yeah, so when you when you when you do new stuff like new graphics and stuff, you those level up separately. So 2D graphics is gonna level up slower than just you know uh, the old graphics were, or 2D graphics V2 rather. All right, let's hope for the best. In the meantime, let's do some research. Oh, casual games cost 20 RP. Okay. Um, we'll, uh, recent market data shows that the Gavador 64 seems to be slowly losing market share against other PC manufacturers. In an unofficial statement, a G64 employee said that the company has been unsuccessful in introducing higher priced computers to compete against newer and more advanced PCs. That's a bit of a, bit of a hint of the future there. We're gonna go ahead and, first reviews came in. And, oh, oh, this is looking good. Vampire and action's a great combination. A nine, a nine, can we get a 10? Can we get a 10? Can we get a 10? Another nine. Come on, come on, give me a 10. A nine, 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 nine. Ah, still really good. That is still really good. This might be good enough to catapult us into the, the more, the cooler parts of the game. Let's see. Uh, it's still only selling okay. Oddly enough, um, Vampire in Action is a great combination. Gameplay seems to be quite important. Platform audience match is great. And topic audience match is great. Awesome. Okay. Everything went well there. Yeah, it's selling okay. It's not selling as well as I would have expected with, with reviews like that, unfortunately. Um, but that's all right, I guess. So we're going to go ahead and research casual games. And then I think we're going to go ahead and end this episode here. Um, and I apologize if you guys have... Oh, hold on. According to our market research, the recently published game The Nightman is a surprise hit with players. The developer of Bacon Industries is fairly new to the gaming industry, but we cannot wait for what they will develop next. We've actually made like seven games, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to pause it. So, yeah, I apologize if you guys have left any comments or suggestions that I haven't gotten back to. I'm, I'm kind of recording quite a few at once, so it may be some time before any suggestions or anything like that actually gets incorporated. But I really hope you guys are enjoying this series because I, like I said, I love this game. It's a lot of fun. Go check it out. And yeah, I think that's about it. Hope you guys all enjoyed and I will see you all later.